that Orson here will never cast a meaningful vote because he's only going to cast a vote for the person who's already going to win. So when I think about how free I am, and I, and I want to assess my level of freedom, the one thing that I'm going to be thinking about are how many things, what is out there forcing me to do things that I may or may not choose to do. It's not about governments. It's not about, I live in a democracy, so therefore. It's about every single day. When I wake up, what am I choosing to do? What do I want to do? And I'm able, am I able to do what I want to do? And how many rules are there that are forcing me to do things, in particular, that I don't want to do? We have three volunteers today. We have someone from Saudi Arabia, we have someone from China, and we have someone from the United States. And we're going to compare the lives of these three people. In her country is the king. The king and the people around the king are deciding on the rules. So there's no, there's no elections. How much say do you have in the government and what goes on in the government, the rules? I don't think like us as citizens like of Saudi Arabia, like we don't have like a uh, opportunity to vote. I don't, and I don't think like that's a problem. Like mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. like how it's been since yeah. forever. And mm -hmm. like we're used to it. But like once I got to the US, like I noticed, oh, like there's something such as voting. They, they're like, oh, uh, do you want to vote? I'm like, no, I'm not a citizen of the United States, so I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just there to, like, get the free food that they have. So you, you all have a president, and the president has a network of people around him who is making the rules. Yes. And the rules are implemented by a vast bureaucracy, which in your country you call the, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Here, we don't call it that. There, they call it the CCP, okay? But it's the vast bureaucracy. It's just you're connected to the CCP. People in the CCP are appointed, they're hired, and they're sometimes elected. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes elected. Yes. Okay, so tell me, how does it work there? Like you I've heard before, like, how, how much we think we have influence on, like, some of the decisions on maybe, like, some laws or um, elections or whatever happening in the government. Mm -hmm. uh, like my personal experiences are like there's not much that we can influence on maybe a law can be passed or a certain individual is going to be in what position. So what I'm being like what, what my experience is is that people in the government get to a certain position because of them knowing a lot of people that will support them in the government or mm -hmm. have a lot of money that can and could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's Which is similar to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So here, here's your president, Xi Jinping, right? Who, by the way, just, you know, he had like, you get five years, he got another, another five term, years. Yeah. He and his advisors just decided, hey, they're going to just give him another five years. So he just started his 11th year. They just changed the Chinese constitution to give him like another five years. So here's your party congress, happens every five years, right? These are people making decisions. This is like, a, this is a lot of, it's like 5,000 people or something, right? Yeah, so like representatives from all of the provinces and a lot of the cities and like some local um, districts all the way up to like the higher ups of the, um, in the government. So. And everything is the CCP, right? So it's like we have Democrats and Republicans and there you just got one party. Yeah, like maybe there are, well, there's only this group. Yeah. And there's no different um, groups like go, go to the next slide. And you've got, you've got you, you have a surveillance state. Like this is, you know, some, some cameras. Like, you know, we think like we have cameras. You think you have cameras in Saudi Arabia? Check it out in, in China, man. Like cameras everywhere. Yeah, so, well, I've talked about this in my word in conversation already, but there's an analogy that I use that we, we used in China, like, so when you want to eat a frog, when you want to boil a frog, you p first put it in warm water instead of just hot boil one. At first, the, water, uh, the frog will not think 
there's a lot of uh, danger, but when he realized then it's already too late. So that's why like we, like the surveillance thing has been around, slowly around yeah. um, since we are already, since we're born. Yeah, before you were born. Yeah, yeah, well, so even before yeah. we are born, but it just got even better and more, um, like, yeah, just better, smarter. More effective. Yeah, more, more effective. Like, well, here, go, go to the next slide. You can see here, like, you, you know, in China, they're so good that you can just pick people out and, and know something about them. Like, so you're walking across the street here in State College and someone can just be watching and know something about each person, man. You know, okay? I mean, it's not, it's not as far ranging as it, could, as it could be or maybe will be, but who knows, right? But this is, you know, this is somewhere about where we're at. Even, uh, especially during COVID, even if you are wearing a mask or something, they, they can still have facial recognition and know who you are and your name, date of birth, uh, even how much you have in your bank account and something like that. Yeah, yeah. a lot about you. How much does that change how you interact oh, outside? Dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what the whole world wants to know, bro. You're walking down the street. Honestly, like, not much. It's still, it's still basically the same. Like, nowadays, like, everyone has a phone. They, they can record you if you are doing something that's strange or whatever. Like, if, if you're here in the U.S., if someone's trying to steal something or whatever, like, people will just record them. It's the same thing as the surveillance. It's just surveillance fixed over there. Like, in, in China, I can still go do whatever I want uh, as long as it's not, it's, it's not illegal on, on the street. And plus, we don't really have a lot of police patrolling the street. We don't have, we, we're not like here in the US that we have police cars running down the street patrolling the street. We, there's not much that going on. So as a substitute, you will need more cameras because to get everything in order. Which would you prefer? Like, would you prefer police on the streets or would you prefer a, a, just a surveillance system like you have? Uh, Dude, that's a fun. <laughs> uh, I think that, okay, I have, a, I have a good answer for this, but so I think it, it depends. For the most part, I don't really care. It's, it's almost the same. But for driving, I prefer here more. Because you like to speed? Not, not that I like to speed, but you have the option to speed and not get a ticket. <laughs> but, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Listen, okay, so, bro, you had to, what, how, what do you make of his answer? I think it's, I think it's interesting. Uh, I, I think I would, I would prefer the way it is in America. I mean, obviously, that's coming from not experienced your culture and, and the way it is over there. But um, the idea of having actual people that you're interacting with other than machines and systems... Um, I, I would prefer that. So um, I want to give a an example, a story. All right. So we have this traffic camera that uh, monitor monitors you, like if you have your seatbelts on, if if you have your head out of the window, right? So there are a couple of cases in China that people are wearing a black shirt with a seatbelt on, and the seatbelt is black, so the camera cannot capture it, and they got a fine for that, and they are trying to fight against the charge and it's not like they didn't win because there's no proof that you're actually wearing a seatbelt because of the resolution of the camera is so low. And there are a couple of times where people have their dogs at the back seat of the car and the dog are like have, having their heads outside of the car and the camera mistaken it with a person's head. You live in China, you live in Beijing State College is a small town in China. There's cameras everywhere. Everything you do, someone's watching you, okay? Cross the street, go here, go there. Somebody's watching you. How does your behavior change tonight as a result of that? Bro, do you have a response? Like you're, the difference between here, how, do you, how, is your, how are your actions here in the U.S. different than how they will be when you return to China? Uh, yeah, like I said before, not, not that much. It's not like... There's no surveillance over here that I'm going to um, walking down the street and just take someone's stuff. Uh, yeah. No, but what I wouldn't do over here, I wouldn't do back in China. Like, there's one thing with surveillance, and there's another thing that's uh, to, more to the moral parts of, your, of yourself. Like, personally, to my morality, like, I wouldn't steal someone's stuff. I wouldn't like, push someone over because they are in my way. Just personally thinking that well, all of my actions will have a consequence at some time. So I wouldn't be 
doing that because of there will be some negative consequences. So, yeah, there, yeah, this, to the answer, not that much of a difference. Orson, how about you, man? Like, how's your life gonna change when you're not here? So, it's going to surprise. A, well, it's going to surprise a lot of Americans. Well, a lot of you here. Like, first, we don't have Netflix. Like, you have the options. You have it. We don't have it. We have we have our own versions of um, YouTube. Couple mm -hmm. of versions. Mm -hmm. like, there are a couple of websites like that. The thing is, like, if I'm if I'm back in China, I wouldn't be able to follow my favorite Netflix show on mm -hmm. Netflix. Or your favorite YouTube or channel, favorite YouTube which channel. would be Social 19, right, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. it's, it's, it's on the top of my subscription list, yeah. yes. Yeah. No, I there, wouldn't be able to use Instagram or Twitter okay. or Snapchat. Okay. Uh, we have our own versions and of And you have like WeChat, you do all the, all yeah, the things yeah, that like you have. WeChat is like a combination of a lot of those uh -huh, things. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah. you can't do those things. So you're going to follow your life. You have a different life back there. And how is that life compared to your life here? I haven't been back home for almost four years now. So it's going to take some time for me to adapt to the way of living back, back home. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I would say like life back home and life over here in the U.S. have both their benefits and some mm -hmm. of their downsides. Mm -hmm. And there is something that I can get in China that I can't get here, mm -hmm. like very nice food cheap um or some like really cheap stuff like, mm -hmm. yes and dude we get a lot of cheap chinese shit here also man by the way we just go to walmart and target and all those but nonetheless yeah, maybe my ahead. uncle made that yeah <laughs> no no, no, no. <laughs> no i'm just kidding that's a joke 